Welcome everybody, Albert with the Convicts Thoughts. Thursday, September 14th, we're almost to the weekend. I don't know who's excited or who's tired. I'm tired, I bet all of you guys are working hard as well. I put in a good day's work today. I don't know if my boss would say so. My wife is my boss, so I'm not so sure how she would feel about my hard work, but I'm doing what I can. Now I'm going to spend some time with you guys. As you guys know, yesterday uh, I, I did a quick video speaking in regards to my respects for Steve G. Idaho 4 tragedy case. The respect that I had for him in regards to how he's actually handling the loss of his daughter and everything going on swirling around about the case. Overnight, I had many thoughts running through my head as I started to see the creeping remnants as I was going to be prepared to do a live as I found out that 48 Hours would be releasing a new documentary show regarding the case. Here we go again. I mean, it, it, the first go around of this was an absolute disaster. It put out so much unconfirmed information that I mean, it, it set off a frenzy of people that took everything for granted that it was real and true, and then it just started to get picked apart. And uh, a ton of it was not. It's unconfirmed. And here we go again. Um, initially, uh, just a head scratching thought for me, and then as I sat down with my wife and we discussed it, because I remember for years upon years I watched 48 Hours and Dateline and 2020 and all kinds of stuff that would discuss things about cases. You know, when you're in DOC, a lot of times you only uh, get the normal standard uh, local channels. Uh, some units obviously do have cable, but a lot of times you're stuck to local channels. So you get CBS, NBC, so you watch a lot of stuff like um, Dateline and 48 Hours. And I've even had a couple of people that I know from the yard that have had documentaries done on them on those shows. So very familiar with them. Very frustrated with the stance that they're taking in regards to this case. I guess I just had never seen them or felt as though they had stooped so low as they actually are with this case. It It's very hard to accept the fact that they're even doing this before this case has made it to trial. Um, with a case as big as this one and a very strict gag order in place. They're relying on getting information from unnamed sources or paid for sources uh, in regards to the information that they're putting out there. Of course, they're going to have the everyday stuff that all of us have gotten from the court documents and the, the releases of motions and different things through the websites. But a lot of this is unconfirmed, anonymous sources speaking for uh, what I would consider to be a personal profit, payment, money going into their pocket, and they're not even willing to put their real and true name to it because they say, it could put me at risk. Well, if it's going to put you at risk, don't talk about it. Let's be real, ladies and gentlemen. If it puts you at risk and you're not a part of the overall investigation or the actual case and families involved in it, and you don't have factual evidence to speak of, don't speak unless you can put your name to what you have to say. Um, I threw a hissy fit when News Nation had an anonymous inmate from the Lata County Jail come on to describe the layout of the jail and the privileges and even uh, the defendant of this case and how he's being treated in there. And I knew the minute he started speaking, he was a liar. He was a paid for liar. How do I know that? I've been in that jail. I know exactly what cell block this defendant is on because I was there. 
There is four cells in the basement of that jail that is segregation. I know the full setup of it. I know exactly how the inmates are treated. I know what privileges they have, except for the fact now I believe they're allowed to have tablets. When I was not there, you were not allowed to have a tablet. So that's something new, and I'll grant that. However, this person stating of how people were able to catcall this defendant and talk to him and tell them how at risk his life was is incorrect. It's false. It's a lie. It was a paid-for lie. Now, is everything a lie? No. I highly doubt that. There's many parts of this upcoming show that I'm sure they're going to go back over that has been released through court documents and motions to the court. Those, granted, we've all seen, we all know, it's not hearsay because it's through the court and we know what they're saying. Now, I have kind of an issue and I... I am not going to say this disrespectfully because I absolutely still respect the man and the way that he's protecting his lost daughter and his family. I will never take away the feeling that I have for this man because like I said in my previous video, I'm not a father, but I am a dedicated, loving husband, and I know how I would react if somebody affected that relationship and took that from me. All hell would break loose. All hell would break loose. Nobody would be able to contain me. Nobody would be able to stop me. And I, it, it would be a wild man on the loose, and it would be scary. Now, he is handling it better than I probably would be. Granted, I'm not a big talker. I would not be speaking to anybody within the press. I would not be doing uh, social media, any sort of groups. I would not be doing interviews with uh, mainstream or non-mainstream media to get any facts out there or any words expressed. I personally am a very private person even though people would say but yeah but you, you, you're doing uh youtube channels you you you're doing lives you're doing lives on facebook you have groups and this is a growth period for me to expand my social skills and my capability coming from where i came from uh, a very private very to myself person my entire lifetime to a very segregated locked in a cell lifestyle while I was in prison to now being released and growing as a man and becoming more comfortable in my own skin being more comfortable in the growth uh, of life for myself and a better husband and a better person in society this is why I'm doing it however I am not here to spread rumors I am not here to talk falsehoods. I'm not here to badmouth anybody or make any claims against anybody. I do that privately and I do it face to face and I, I speak how I feel and I back my words by looking someone in the eyes and telling them exactly how I feel. I can't do that exactly in this instance because obviously Steve G is in Idaho and he's uh, handling a very devastating tragedy in life, and I absolutely respect that, and I don't want to call him out face-to-face -face or in a negative manner. So no disrespect in what I have to say. However, I do have an issue with some things that have been presented to me. Uh, very, As I've stated, I'm analytical. I analyze everything. I love to read things. I love to research and I love to pick things apart and figure out what I believe, what I don't believe, what's true, what's not true, why it would be. And then I move forward and I can make a construction statement based off of how I feel and what my opinion is off of what I've garnered that I feel as though is believable and not make believe out of what I've read or heard.
We all, since the beginning of this case, have scoured for the truth. We all want it. Whether we ever get that is a whole nother story. But as we worked through this process, we began with just information coming from Ali that was very uh, misinformative and we were, we were all up in arms on what was actually transpiring and happening. Nobody understood what was being said or why. It didn't make sense. Fast forward a little bit, we get to an arrest of a gentleman nobody had ever heard of or considered. It was maybe fits the bill for a lot of people that said the person that had committed this crime was going to turn out to be some sort of serial killer or a mentally ill becoming that uh, individual. It, it was going to be somebody that was unknown and and out of the darkness pops in and is going to be a suspect and, and most likely the person that committed the crime. So I give a lot of you guys props that said that from the very beginning. I was not one of them. Um, I give you guys props because if this defendant is actually the person, then you guys had it nailed on the head that in what we see, it could possibly be out of the darkness with a path and a uh, a way forward that could turn into something possibly more. This isn't the style of crime if it's your first ever one that's just going to end here and you would never do it again. I'm, I, I've been around far too many convicts and people that have been convicted of sick crimes to know this isn't a one and done type situation. So if this is the individual, I'll be the first one to stand up and say it's a great catch because it was going to be very devastating down the road for sure with how many could have racked up for this. If this is not the individual, it's a very scary thought because that means exactly what I just described is still out there, still loose, could possibly be doing it as we speak, and they just haven't caught on to it yet, or they're laying in wait, and it will happen again. There are numerous of those that go long time periods in between before they do it again. Now, I need to get to the point of why I wanted to do this video. I gave all my respect and understanding yesterday to Steve G and what he had to say and I even gave him the respects and the acknowledgement that he even discussed misstating things in the past that he grew and, and learned from and, and he understands that that happens. I've got a bone to pick. We're back to now. The connection again is with his daughter via Instagram. This has been beat around the bush for a long time. Been beat around the bush for a long time. I'm not anything special or amazing, but I do have knowledge in regards to this gentleman's Instagram page. We have been informed by the defense through a motion directly to the court stating with all discoverable evidence that has been turned over by the prosecution to the defense. And if any of you are going to tell me that the social media accounts of the defendant and all of the victims were not included in that and turned over, let's say it nicely, that's a foolish thing to think that would be absolutely included in the discovery to the defense that is one of the first things this defendant's law team would be looking for to build a defense against any sort of motive that may pop up at trial let me sink that in I'm going to let it sink in because I want to get a sip of coffee. It's been a long day. But let that sink in for a minute. 
discoverable evidence laying before the defense team that has to protect its client, the defendant, against any sort of testimony or prosecutional push upon a motive for the crime. Do you not think Instagram messaging back and forth or liking of all of the pictures or any sort of connection to social media accounts would add up to motive? We know it, ladies and gentlemen. If you had a connection through social media, that's going to be a direct link that the defense said there was not. Steve G. wants to stay miraculously out of somewhere. He found that there was. Okay, guys, look. There's a lot of likes on both Maddie's and Kaylee's pictures. I'm sure there's a lot on Zana's. They're everywhere. But you don't think the investigation team would have found the real account for the defendant, comparing it to what has liked, favorited, or messaged on social media and found that connection and turned that over as evidence to the defense? You don't think that would have been included? Of course it was. Of course it was. There's no revelation of what Steve G. and his family could have possibly found that made a connection. For goodness sakes, they were going off legitimately right after uh, everything happened about the LinkedIn account being taken down, and, and they're all over that. What, what do you think, that the investigators weren't looking into that after all those claims, and if somehow this defendant had any uh, ability to do that, that would have been brought out? I can't even get my own LinkedIn to come down. It's been up forever. I made it while I was in the penitentiary on a cell phone, part of an, an inner prison scam. So don't tell me that weird things can happen on social media because we used to manipulate it all the time off cell phones from the penitentiary. Can't even shut it down myself, and it's not even real, and I got every reason to be able to shut it down because it was made by me and I should be able to shut that down. But that's not even the point. It doesn't matter. Her, uh, you know, supposed LinkedIn account disappeared. Okay. Okay. That's something that needs to be looked into, but that's not going to tie the fact that the investigators, the FBI, everybody that everybody's laying all this trust into that I put up my hands and say, hold on, I, I, I've seen some weird stuff in the day before. I've seen some missed evidence. I've seen things that go awry, but everybody tells me, hey, 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 it's law enforcement. There's no way that they could do anything wrong. They're not going to miss something that big. They would never do it. There's no discovery evidence that was turned over. Otherwise, the defense team wouldn't have said that there was no connection via any of those means. Come on. Even the people that haven't found guilty have to understand the defense is not. They are not going to file motions to the court claiming Complete, absolute BS lies. This is not how you defend a case. It's not how you do it. She is the lead uh, public defender, and she's death penalty qualified. You, uh, you just have to take that into the room. That means she's not the biggest of the biggest, and she's... Not the grandest of the grandest, but she's very good at what she does, and she's the tops in her department, meaning she's going to be required to handle the top of the top cases. She could throw all that away with one missed step, one missed lie. Anything that these people are accusing of her of doing, 
would throw her career away. Her sidebar, sidekick, Massa, is in the very same position in the fact death penalty qualified, private attorney, and she's building a name and a portfolio for herself to move forward within the state and pro- probably even get bigger and better than that, has great reviews. And if she were to put her name, because her name is on every docket as well, to anything of the nature, she could possibly be sanctioned and in trouble for it as well. But nobody even stops to think that what they put into their motion to the court could have some realm of truth to it because now all of a sudden we got a victim's father claiming they found the link. I know they're working hard behind the scenes. I'm not dumb. I, I I know. He's a father. He wants justice for his daughter. His wife wants justice for her daughter. I see the emotion in the way that they talk. I saw the beginning uh, of the show that's coming out of the, the, the 48 hours. I see the mother crying. I feel for her. I really, really do. But I listened to what they have to say in that very short stint. Now, all of a sudden, we're talking about he entered the home with a murder kit. A murder kit. This is a gentleman that has stood up boldly stating the prosecuting attorneys and prosecuting office does not confer or speak with him regarding this case on a good enough level that he was even asked whether he felt good about having cameras in the the courtroom or not. He has spoken out of his own mouth that he's going to call out these prosecutors and he's going to start putting people on the spot because he feels like the defense and the prosecution are working together. I got I got a bone to pick. This is not Israel Keys and the miraculous murder kits that he left across the country of buckets with his tools for the crime in them, so that any time he traveled within a certain amount of distance of where he his next crime was going to be, he would have a murder kit already ready to go. And that man used a gun, not a knife. A little bit easier. He had some ammunition, a gun, and. You know, whatever else he had in that bucket that he bought from Home Depot. Guys, I study cases too. Just like many of the true crime gurus out there do, I, I'm, I'm interested in them as well. I know the comparison of a murder kit. It goes right to Israel Keys. Same area almost. Israel Keys being from Alaska, but many of his crimes or thought about crimes happened in the state of Washington. I feel for the families. I really, really do. I haven't heard anything come from the Mogans, and it's been stated that Steve is speaking on behalf for them I don't know that. I don't know that. I know that family's pretty quiet because you don't hear or see much about them. I know they have their own problems going on. I'm not going to get into that on this video. We all know about the problems that they're enduring. Could it have tied to this case? Who knows? That's a discussion for another time. My discussion is Steve D is speaking at... He's the leader for all the victims and their families. He's not. Ethan's family has spoken for him and how they are going to handle this situation. Far differently than anybody else, I see. Zana's family, the mother has... Things that she needs to resolve, and I, I, tr- 
truly in my heart hope only the best for her because I know exactly the battle that she's intertwined with those demons that are, that are grabbing onto her. I have many people that I've adored in my life that have battled that and I know how hard it is and I can't knock her for it because I only want her to get past it and get over it and get it under control and get better. Especially now with the loss of her daughter. I know that is tearing her apart. And I, I hope she can get it all together. But I don't know that Steve G is speaking for her. She was one of the first ones that came out and spoke with Banfield about the defense attorney being her attorney, which is absolutely not even true. If you know the politics of a public defender's office, the lead public defender is on the top of every letter issued to everybody that is being represented by the public defender. I know I was represented by him by so many times, and I always had a letterhead from the top of the top of the public defender's office on every letter I got, they were never a part of my case. That was more paid for mainstream media information. False. But many people out there don't know that isn't true. So it, it carried weight. And now these statements being made are going to carry weight. They're going to carry weight. Just like people believe that the defendant was threatened in the jail that he was being housed in when I personally know for a fact nobody could get even close enough to him to talk to him, yet everybody's shouting at him as if he's walking down a run of inmates that everybody could see or talk to him. And that's not the case. I'm frustrated because yesterday I came on here and I gave a very heartfelt opinion in regards to the interview that I had watched and what had been stated and I fully felt as though this man realized that he's he's fighting for the cameras in the courtroom to let the truth be told and I agree I think that damn right those cameras need to be in the courtroom and everybody needs to visually be able to see how somebody speaks how directly they're looking at the person they're talking to because you can tell a liar by the mannerisms while they talk. I used to have this trait when I lied, I would look down. I didn't want to look at the person. Even I knew I was lying. I was convincing, don't get me wrong, I was convincing. But the people that knew my traits knew I was lying. I know what to look for. I want to watch the trial because I'm going to be able to see when someone takes a stand exactly how they act and how they mannerism themselves. I was around thieves, liars, uh, convicts, the worst of the worst, drug addicts, everybody, for years upon years of my life, in and out of, of the penitentiary. If you don't think I became a pretty good reader of a criminal, Sorry to tell you, I ran yards. I spoke for my race. I handled the conflicts of the yard. I have a little bit of an ability to know who's lying, who's not, who's got a little odd mannerisms. I could tell this defendant is an ex heroin user. I know. I see it. I also know there's a good possibility that he has cleaned up his act, he's going to college, but he's still got a little bit of a, a device going on in there that is most likely not the same, but there's something twitched in there, and who knows what it is. Only he will know that, and the people around him that either supplied him or enabled him to be able to do it. I am not personally attacking any of the family directly other than to say everybody wants the truth. Steve Gonzalez, Gonzalez, excuse me, tired, came out and directly says his whole thing about having the cameras in the courtroom is so that the truth has to be told and can be seen, seen by everybody. 
It's going to even drag the victim's families through the mud because things are going to be said and seen that are going to be heartbreaking for those families and maybe even a little bit degrading at times. He's willing to go through that because he wants the truth. He wants the right person found guilty for a crime that took his daughter. You say you want the truth. You need the truth to heal. I know that. I get it. You are a father. You deserve the truth. The reason why there's such a battle over cameras being in the courtroom is because of the social media drama of inconsistencies of what's true, what's not true, what's true, what's not true, all being spoken about and shared to where nobody knows what's true and not true anymore. Nobody knows. Steve. And your comments. And now you're going on national TV for a paid interview. There's nothing that can be said other than it is a paid interview. This is money that's going to go somewhere. Whether you've dedicated it to some sort of donation, uh, a scholarship foundation, whatever you've decided to do with it, there is payment that is going to be made for this newly released show. It wouldn't be done otherwise. I don't care. It just would not be done. The network is going to profit off of it themselves. This could be big money. And it's the start of the whole gamut for years upon years of this. You want the truth, yet you're going to do a show that's going to highlight unconfirmed information that has not been released as factual truth. And no, Steve, you do not have a gag order. I get it. You're more than welcome to speak. You are speaking. You have been speaking. Nobody's, nobody's took your tongue. Nobody said you can't do it. You're doing it. We're power to you. At least say it's an opinion. At least say it possibly may be. Do not add to the fire. I like all of you. I, I listen to many people speak in regards to many things uh, regarding various parts of this case and other cases, and uh, I enjoy all of it as well. Sometimes, you know, when I fall asleep, and I had a lady today, she went off about me because, you know, she's saying it's the weirdest thing that someone drives around at night and blah, blah, blah. I drive around at night all the time. I'm out all the time. I live in Vegas. I go eat at 3 o'clock in the morning sometimes, ladies and gentlemen. I, I'm a 24-7 type of person. When I do finally lay down in bed, I got my earphones in, I'm down for a couple hours, and I back up and I'm gone. People say, oh, he's got to be a drug addict. He's got it. I've never, ever done a drug in my life. Might look like I have, and people always tell me that. Thank you so much. Never done a drug in my life. I'll take a drug test, an alcohol test, any type of test anybody wants to do, anytime. Hair follicle, urine test, whatever it might be. Never done it. And I'm out and about all the time. I'm not out stocking. I'm not out doing anything other than driving, getting some personal peace, enjoying a hamburger, Maybe stopping by a slot machine and playing a couple dollars. And everybody's, everybody's going to say, well, you live in Las Vegas. Of course you're going to be out all night. Okay, let me end this video this way. I'm going to break it down for you. Everybody's going crazy that he went for a drive. Leaving his house. Might have been 1 a.m. By the sounds of the way that the alibi was portrayed, he... Had been out, possibly came home 
and then left again. So let's just go from left again. 2.45 in the morning. Hopped in his car to go for a drive. That's the craziest thing in the world. We're in a college town on a Saturday night. Oh my God, I can't believe anybody would be out past 2.45 in the morning. Ladies and gentlemen, the girls didn't even get back from the grub truck till 2 a.m. We see the, gen uh, the, the group of, of guys on the police body cam at 3 a.m. We see the visual pictures of people running in the lights behind the police cars at 3.30 a.m. We see the Linda Lane footage at 4 a.m. with not just the one car coming in and turning around and leaving, other people moving around. We heard people talking, whether that's real or not true, who knows. Even after the time frame, we see cars moving. People coming out, getting in their car, starting it up and leaving it. Everybody chalked it up while they're going to work. Okay. Great. I'm glad they are. There's people moving around all night. There's people coming home from a graveyard job that maybe even have to drive all night delivering newspapers or packages or whatever it might be. There's people out and about 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Don't call someone crazy. Because they're in their car driving at 2.45 in the morning to get some fresh air. My wife, she does it all the time. When I piss my wife off, poof, car out of the driveway for a drive. Call her crazy. Oh my God, my wife is crazy. Good Christian, religious gal. Works more than 50 hours a week. Runs a side full-time business. perfect ratings on keeps me in check loves her family does everything you could possibly do to help other people including help me go see children in the hospital sometimes at 2 o'clock in the morning that are coming out of cancer treatments or getting prepared for them and you know she wants to go take a drive at 2.45 in the morning so she's crazy so weird. She must be a sicko. Hell, I think I'm going to go for a drive tonight at 2.30 in the morning just so I can go be a sicko and a weirdo. Guys, mainstream media has stooped to a level that is so low now that even they are taking advantage, in my opinion, of a victim's family that is heartbroken and crushed over the loss of their daughter, giving them the idea that they're going to get the whole story out to the mass public for view so that the word's out there so we get justice for the children. I call them children. They were college kids. They were their children. We all want justice. You don't have to throw it out there in some bogus mainstream media way. We want the justice. If this guy is guilty, if this defendant is guilty, he's got his coming. He's got it coming. He doesn't have a pretty future if he's guilty. But if he's not guilty, and there's evidence out there, that could possibly let him be found not guilty, or it might be reasonable doubt. This man's life is over either way. So even for those that know he's guilty before he goes to trial, you want justice, and if this guy gets off on a technicality, don't worry, his life's ruined and so is his family's. Are we proud of ourselves? Is that justice? Disappointed. I, I mean, I, I'm disappointed. 
I didn't, I didn't think we were going to do this again pre-trial. Again. I'm sure we'll all be tuned in, though. We're all going to watch 48 hours. The Idaho 4 tragedy information. And 50% of the people are going to believe every word said. Let's find out what was in those murder kits. Never heard that one till now. That's new. Murder kit brought in with him. He couldn't even carry the sheath out with him, but he got that murder kit out. Disappointed, ladies and gentlemen. You guys have a great Thursday night. We'll talk soon.